タラタタラタラタタラタラタタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタラタ If you're listening to this when we actually release it, that will have always already happened.、Yeah. So maybe you've already seen it. It's only 10 episodes, too, which breaks my heart. I know. Yeah. Welcome, Welcome to Tin Pan Theater Podcast.、Yay. Whoa! Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Tin Pan Podcast, recorded out of Tin Pan Theater from Ben Film and Tin Pan in Bend, Oregon. My name is Todd Leiser. I'm Chick on Flick. Yeah, Julie you are. Furness. <laughs> I'm Jerry r a s i c Yeah, you I'm, are. I'm Dude on Movies. Sad. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the Sad Bastard Chronicles. Yeah, I am the Sad Bastard Chronicles. That, that, that is an official Instagram that、it、you can't follow yeah, with Jared、yeah, Rossick's、yeah, portrait. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, thanks for listening, everybody.、Uh, it's been a, been a while, but we've got a great lineup of movies at Tin Pan right now that we're pretty freaking excited to talk about.、Um, yeah, it's, yeah this, this, is our, this is our first summer post vaccination.、Uh, and I, I would say overall, things have been pretty good for the theater. Like, audiences are coming back. Yeah. Some safety things are still up in the air, but for the most part,、um, you can come to Tin Pan and there's going to be seats available. Yeah.、Um, I, I think,、uh, yeah, I, I assume most folks in our area are going to Regal and McMenamin's and Odom and Us and, and pretty much frequ-、right. frequenting most、right. of the other movie theaters. They are. I will say there is a mask mandate、um, happening、uh, for next week,、um, coming from, straight from Governor Brown、so, uh, and the CDC. Um, so, we will be following those guidelines、um, just for anyone who's planning on coming out. And that is only entering and exiting our theater,、mm. going to the bathroom, and also approaching the bar. If、so. you have concessions, obviously you don't need a mask. I hate that we are talking about this again. I hate it. But I mean, one, thing I hate it. Not,、yeah. one thing that's nice is that our, one of our, our neighbors, Thump, They, they're wearing masks all behind the bar, and we're doing the same.、Yep. Uh, and so it, I think it's just one of those things at this point of just doing it just. We so, are in solidarity. Just, just, just to make people、mm-hmm. feel, feel good and feel safe. Yeah. You yeah. know, but it's also, I don't know if you guys saw this, but I, on, I got an email yesterday saying that it was going to be masks indoors, indoors, period, in Portland. Like, you have to wear masks.、Mm-hmm. It's up to a $1,000 fine. Not just moving around. If you're indoors, you're wearing a mask.、Okay. Starting Friday. That's Multnomah in County. Multnomah so, County、okay. starting Friday in Portland. So that leads me to believe that what Kate Brown says that's going to happen here、yeah. in this county might be a little more serious than just moving about the cabin. Kind so, of I mean,、thing. 97%、um, our hospitals are all full. Right, right,、um, right. And 97% of the, ho- of the people who are, have tested positive are unvaccinated. Correct. The 3%、right. Yeah. right there. Vaccinated.、Yeah. That's the scary part. Even though there's that 3 to 10% chance, right, that's right, the scary part. Right. So, Suffice to say, though, I'd say if you want to come see a movie, really the only thing you have to worry about is a mask because there's not any limitation、yep. on how many people. So, yep. St- yeah, I- I'd say still use this chance to, to, to come see movies and hopefully you'll want to come to Tin Pan and, yeah, and see what we got. Yeah, please do.、Um, but yeah, right now we're, we've got, I think, one of our best lineups at Tin Pan. Um, e- even the last couple weeks have been great. We, we had played、uh, Where、mm-hmm. Was Within for a couple weeks, which has been a great horror comedy.、Yeah. Uh, a lot of people came out、mm-hmm. to that. We're really happy.、Um, uh, we, and, and we've had now for two weeks Pig, the new Nicolas Cage movie,、yeah. which is、uh, unlike what you think、uh, it's going to be <laughs> when you hear the description that it's Nicolas Cage going after his stolen truffle pig. Right. I feel、uh, like calling it surprisingly good is almost damning it with faint praise. Maybe, yeah. But it is surprisingly good. Because people are like, surprisingly good.、Uh, yeah. I mean, it's the way you say it, you know? And it's yeah, Nicolas Cage.、Yeah. So it's like. It is, yeah. It's also it's Nicolas Cage's best acting, I think,、oh, of, no. almost of his entire career, possibly. It's, it's neat because the movies that we're playing right now, I think all of them, to some extent, when the movie ends. Everybody just sits in yeah, silence、yes. for about 30 seconds to a minute. Like yeah, they don't it's, move. It's, it's that kind of. Yeah. It's those kind of movies.、Um, oh. So, but, but before we get into each movie specifically, I also just want to say that we're also playing Nine Days right now,、uh, which is a new film from a first time director named Edson Oda.、Uh, but it's got a stacked cast of Winston Duke, Zazie Beetz,、uh, Bill Skarsgård, Tony Hale, 
Um, Benedict Wong. Benedict Wong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and if anyone is familiar with the uh, 1998 or 97 movie Afterlife right. from the Japanese director Hirokazu Kori Eda, this movie is in direct conversation with that. Um, in simplest form, uh, oh, Jared, you have something to say? Sorry, I was just going to say, uh, Criterion announced that it's that's Afterlife right. is going to be criteria. Uh, yeah, criterion. That, that, I think that was a couple weeks ago. Was it? Okay, yeah. I just saw it on Instagram today. It's I, either okay. just about to come out or oh. has maybe or just like recently come okay. out. Because I think it got announced. It got announced recently. I'm gonna buy five copies and put them in a in like on a bed and yeah. roll over them like and like it stacks of money. Hey, we should ch- we should check if that's also a Janice film. <laughs> yeah, we were. Yeah, I will. I will. Yes, yes, I will. Nice. Um, but yeah, nine days is a uh, sort of a. Surreal fantasy drama about what it means to be alive. Uh, it's got existentialism, uh, and yeah, we'll get it. We'll get into into more of it in, in a second. Uh, but then I also do want to mention that this Friday we're going to open up the Green Knight, the new fantasy film from David Lowry that was going to come out last year. It got a trailer and everything. It was one of the things that got pushed. This is A24's biggest movie they've ever released. Pretty much. Um, and it, it's maybe the movie I've been most excited for over the past year and a half than, than just about anything else. Mm. I'm very excited that we are going to be opening it up this Friday. Can't wait. Uh, Jared and I already got to see early screenings of it, which is, which is cool. Uh, and, and, and we both really liked it a lot. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Um, there's so much to say about it. I think if you... If, if, if you're uh, unfamiliar with this movie, you're going to hear us talk about it. But if you are familiar with it, are familiar with it already, you know why we are excited. About yeah, this movie. yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, so yeah, uh, we want to talk about Pig first. I yeah, think let's, so. talk, about let's talk about Pig. Yeah. Cool. Let's get that one out of the way. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, one of the first things I think I'll say, I'm, I was, I was almost surprised to realize that just Nick Cage's name as a movie star is still brings in audiences. Like, yeah, like absolutely. he's it's still a name that can go above the title and. People, people like Nick Cage. Yeah, I don't think... Or they hate Nick well, Cage. Well, yeah. I think there is a preconceived notion, though. Yeah, yeah. I think when they see Nicolas Cage in the credits or starring, mm-hmm. they're like... Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You know, and then... There's some people that's, that still remember the good times and other people yeah. who only remember yes, the recent years. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And we, we talked about this, you know, what's the best, worst Nicolas Cage movie loved him and like kick ass you yeah, know yeah, and like things yeah. like that i mean we know his acting style right right i call, it, I call it mega acting mega acting yeah, yeah. there, there um, is there is the youtube video that's literally called nicholas cage loses his shit and it's a, <laughs> it, is, it is a montage of every time nicholas cage screams and loses his shit that's amazing on camera though yeah on camera, on camera. yeah, yeah. Like, in, in, a, yeah in, a in a movie in a scripted yeah. film right. where the yes. director right. said yes that's what i want yes yeah. yes perfect because and they the kept dr- it in yeah, the we're gonna yeah. use that because yeah, the director yeah. knows that he can they, he can get that yeah, yeah. she can get that from him right yeah. i right. would like to see nicholas coppola <laughs> <laughs> do a wes anderson film yeah it's, that it's, would be oh, great I want to see that because I want to see this was different, but I, you know, I, I, I mean, especially I, since like Bruce Willis has been in, 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 in Wes Anderson movies, like Nick Cage on. would absolutely fit very easily come into, into a Wes Anderson. Come so on. they that's, just, that's gonna just happen. cast for not, not French dispatch, but, but his next one, next yeah. one, he just cast Tom Hanks. That's right. And so it's yeah. like, it's, it's like Tilda I, Swinton and Tom Hanks. Yeah. It's like, big names. Okay, okay. Like, let's see what Tom I Hanks know, does in a Wes Anderson movie. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you. First mm-hmm. of all, um, why do we think Nicolas Cage signed on for this? Oh, uh, man. there's a, Okay, yeah, because there's, there's a lot of things, I think, to, to unpack here. One, this is a first-time director. Um, so obviously this guy must have had some some sort of resume of maybe commercials or music videos or something. I couldn't find out a lot about um, – his name is Michael – Michael Sarnowski. Michael Sarnowski. Sarnowski. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I wonder if maybe there's a little combination of Nick Cage being the kind of actor that that likes to give first-time directors like like a chance, like hey, I want I want to help you out here. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there was also this guy. I, I'm sure Sarnowski just Nicholas Cage probably recognized that. Oh, this guy's got talent. Um, but I do remember reading one quote from Nick Cage a little while back that he said he read the script and he he realized that. Just with himself being at the age that he is, in his mid fifties, that he felt like he had the experience that he could really get across a lot of the emotions mm-hmm. that were in the script. Because mm-hmm. there's a lot of subtlety to to yeah, the to yeah. the character in this movie, 
and yeah, and it seems like Nick Cage was very he he probably for a while has wanted to find a good role that like he can just just use his experience as a human and like at his age to just right. just be in the character. And this was probably maybe just the one that came along that that he was like, okay, this is my opportunity. I just I want to use this script because I can just I can just live it and and I have that that lifelong experience of you know pain and loss and right. suffering. Yeah, right. I mean, and I wonder if he was like, okay, so this film is about. Um, a truffle hunter who lives alone in the Oregon wilderness. He must but, return to his past in Portland in search of the beloved foraging pig after she is kidnapped. Right. Okay. Well, and I wonder if he was like, oh, totally. You know, I mean, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure you read the script. That whatever, sounds but, like my wheelhouse. Yeah, yeah. that sounds uh, definitely. Okay. And, and he's putting this character in mind and this recluse right. and all this. Um, and we'll get to, I don't think there was a lot of character development for that, for his chef past, I, or his, there, there might've been, but it was, I, 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 that's one of my critiques of, of the, of the script anyway. Um, Um, because I thought his acting was wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yes, I think he immediately saw himself as like, Oh, I could gain weight. Mm -hmm. Grow my hair out. Right. 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 (laughs) Be emotionless. Mm -hmm. Cause there there was emotion, but it, for most, a lot of it, there was it no was, it, emotion. It was a very slow build of it. Like he, he it, tracked it, it, that performance yeah, perfect. It, it, it's a character like bearing a lot of emotion oh, down yeah. below bearing and, a lot. and not, yeah, not want to get a lot out. Um, I also want to say had that this is obviously a very Oregon movie. Um, yeah. which very Oregon. My God. Part of why we're we're, we're getting good audiences. Yeah. I know that. Uh, <laughs> I think. Oregon moviegoers love to see movies set in Oregon. They yeah. really do. Yeah, we're, we're a passionate people about our state. I think the most Oregon moment of the entire movie oh, is, is, uh, is when, when Nicolas Cage says, fuck Seattle. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. Right. He says, that was fuck good. Seattle. That was a good one. Yeah, yeah. And when he talks about the Cascadia earthquake. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, what? Yeah, that was yeah. like... <laughs> and, then when he, and then when he looks at Alex Wolf like... You idiot! Mount Hood is an active volcano. Uh, okay, no. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah totally. we're not going there. Yeah, we're not going there. Yeah. This, this, this may be one of the best movies that existentially thinks about what it means to be an Oregonian. Yeah, 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 yeah. It absolutely, really does. It really, absolutely. really does. Because all of this, all of it, was just like, yeah, truffles, mushrooms, you know, right, like these right. fucking weird restaurants in Portland yeah. where there's smoke coming out of things. Yeah, and totally. Like, you know, I, and we deconstruct Oregon cuisine yeah. to such a point that it feels foreign. foreign. It's like, why? why? Yeah, yeah. I remember one time watching an interview with Kyle McLaughlin, who who, who is, is a uh, Pacific Northwestern originally. Yeah. Portlandia, the mayor of Portland yeah. on Portlandia. And, and he was he was being asked about like what, what makes Portland people so passionate. Yeah. And he was like, you know, there's just people who, you know, they search for a certain type of mushroom on a certain type of mountain, only a certain time of year, and they sell that, and they're just they're just a very passionate people. Yeah. And yeah. I was thinking about that interview and that explainer a lot during this movie. I was like, in a way, setting this movie in Portland is perfect because right. the fact that it's about a guy who former chef who is now a trouble hunter and is just passionate about hunting down this pig, like it, right. ma- it it makes sense. Like it kind of it does. It reflects the flavor of the city. Yeah, right, right, and I, right, I right. want to. I I really want to like this so much more. I just my biggest thing was that there was not a ton of development about mm. his past. Right, right. Okay, because I was like, he was a chef. Right, it, but I mean that was kind of the point though. Was guess, was that like we we learned his past through the reactions of, of other, other people. people. You know, we, we never got, we, yeah, we, we, cause we, we don't really know how, we don't, as far as I remember, we don't ever find out how his wife died either, right? We don't know no. how his wife yeah. died. We don't know, like, we never got to see an image even of when he was like, you know, right, a chef right. in We Portland, never saw the better, know, like, the better days. Yeah, the yeah, better days. Yeah, like, yeah. we're just in it with him right now. So yeah. now right. we have to right. imagine everything, which right. is fine. Right. I'm not saying insult your audience, but right. I just, I, it was hard for me to. Yeah, I, I think yeah. it, it, on a second viewing, you might enjoy the movie even more, Julie. Okay. Yeah, um, I agree. I think, I think there was I, a I lot do. yeah, that I was picking up on the second time where I was like, okay, this guy obviously has like a photographic memory. Yep. He's a guy who obviously just cared so much and then just got fed up with the industry because, like, there were so many people who didn't care as much as he did, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and, and – but I think the – the using the plot like, – because it's a very straightforward plot. Right. It's kind of a genre plot in a way, and I think using that very straightforwardness um, 
is why it feels like there's not a lot of character development, but it, it's all there under the surface. It's all yeah, it's yeah. all subtext. It's okay. a neo noir thriller that never becomes a thriller. Like yeah, it, yeah, it, that's, that's it's, a good way to describe it. It's got it. the texture of a thriller. It's got the plot development of a thriller. Like like for instance, the like the little Fight Club sequence of the film. Like you can infer so much from that. Like. Uh, to me, I I thought that was the funniest part of the movie because I know so many chefs in Portland. I know dozens of chefs in Portland, and all of them have a deep, deep rage. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they have a club where they just beat each other up. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they all have a minute just to, yeah. just to, just to throw punches. Just to throw other. punches is the truest thing in that entire movie. Did he get money for that? For getting beat up, or was it? No, he I, got he got money for it. That's what he, he used. Did get money that's for what he. It. I that, thought that, that's that, what he used to give okay. Alex Wolf to get some of those okay, ingredients. Okay, that's yeah, right. Okay, yeah. that's right. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, uh, do, do, oh do we want to try, try to think of our, our quick thoughts as to uh, whether we recommend Pig or not? I think, like honestly, along with Nine Days, like I was I was working on my uh, letterbox last night, kind of making my top ten of the year so far. Nice. And the more I thought about it, the more Pig is just right there at my number one. There's nice. just, there's right. something about it that just feels so like I could watch that movie over and over and over again. Like it because there's there is so much that you put together yourself that every time you watch it, you just get a different texture. You get it, and it is it's just mm-hmm. like the plot of John Wick, where it's like mm-hmm. like there's there's these coins that you use to hire the assassins yeah, there's, there's a mythology almost behind right it, yeah. it, it's the same thing it's like these chefs have an underground fight club beneath a hotel well, that hasn't existed in 50 this years this could be a tv series actually. Oh, yeah. absolutely you know absolutely. and absolutely. maybe not called pig called something else yeah but this yeah. this could be a tv series this could have been stretched out over i'm sorry a mini series yeah, yeah it yeah, could yeah. have been four episodes i would have easily watched know? another 45 minutes i mean totally itself. because i wanted yeah. more i wanted that's more why too, i'm yeah. saying it's it, I wanted yeah. I wanted to know more about his character. It's not that I didn't care. I really cared. Yeah, yeah. But I cared a little bit more about the pig than I cared about. Just like right, him. Right. He cared so much about that pig. Yeah, yeah. I, he didn't I need wanted, it for the truffles either. He didn't I know, need it for the truffles. No, I wanted Look at trees. It is a movie about love. Yeah. It is a movie about love. And about loss. That's that's what I love. See, that's what I love is I imagine because Nicolas Cage talks about how he fired that chef because he kept overcooking he, yeah. the pasta, right? So I imagine Nicolas Cage, one who's a chef, was like this angry, intense person. And now we're at a point where the the I can't remember who. So, oh, the the one guy says, "Oh, what are you fucking your pig?" And instead of it making him mad, he just goes, "No." Yeah. Like, like all of that rage and anger is is gone. gone. That there's a lot of no emotion. Yeah, it's yeah. like he's but 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 also peace yeah. and well, like and be, you know okay so so to, to get into a, a small spoiler so just skip ahead no, five minutes if, yeah. if you still want to watch the movie right the way that he takes down the villain in the end is by making making him the best he he remembers yeah. the best meal that the villain ever had and he says remember what it felt like to have happiness i'm yeah. going to give you that again because i want you to understand the happiness or the, the yes. love that i feel for yeah, my pig yes. so like yeah. it's it's a he takes down the villain by killing him with a kindness. Yeah, he gives him love. Yeah, he gives yeah. him a moment of peace yep. and beauty and love. Yeah, yep. and then yeah. he reveals yeah. the yeah, and the then and then part. gets and yeah. then gets what he yeah, like what by he doing wants. that. He yeah. gets exactly what he wants. And that yeah. begins the he, that he begins that the closure. closure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It begins yeah. the closure, yeah. and then at the end, you're like, okay, well, and, and that's another that. beautiful thing too is that he's sitting in his he's sitting in his shack, and he puts on a tape of his wife singing. We have no context for why his wife was singing that song nope. or anything. Yeah. It's it, like there's no backstory to it. There's no – we don't have any foreshadowing of his wife Nothing. singing to him. Nothing. But at the same time, you hear I'm on fire. Yeah. And, and like, you're just you, like you understand like this is important and like this – yeah, this is a very – because like he, he tries to play that tape earlier in the, earlier in the movie and like can't, can't do it. And right. so it's by the end like, okay, I, 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 I need to right. listen to this again. Like, we don't need to know the context because we see it in his face. Totally. And in that last shot. He's in the darkness, and then he lifts his head up into the light, and then it Cut to black. cuts to black. Yeah. It's, it's perfect. No, it's it a is. Great, it's a great yeah. film. It uh, yeah. It's a good film. Yeah, I think uh, everyone should still come and see it. Uh, I, I know a lot of people have. Uh, it, it really it really is a great indie movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, it, it doesn't lay out things directly for you. Like It, it, it requires you to, to investigate yep. in, in, into the yep. subtext. It does. Um, I'm really happy that 
yeah, that Nick Cage is in a movie like this that we can play it in in, in Tin Pan, and that we're not like making fun of him for yeah, no, it, you no, know, because no, no, normally yeah. we're like, you know, like we're not playing the movie ironically. We're yeah, playing we're it because it's a good movie. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. And I remember yeah. when you brought it up a couple months ago, or yeah. weeks ago, whatever, and you were like, "Have you seen the trailer for this?" And you're like, "Nicholas Cage." Yeah. yeah. Oh, like, this what? is a movie. And we're like, "What?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I just got burned. I rented Willy's Wonderland, which is oh, yeah. yeah, and that was. Garbage, and I, I really, w- I was hoping it would be like Mandy. Mandy, like, yeah. I was hoping it'd be like Mandy or Color Out of uh, Color Out of Space. Yeah, Color Out of Space. Yeah, you should watch just, Face Off next. Yeah, I, should, I really should. I haven't seen that in years. Um, I'm excited to make a sequel to that. Oh, come but, yeah. on! Please, please come down and see Pig if you yeah, haven't already. If, I, I would say if you have thought like, oh, I might see that, but like, do I really want to go see it? It's yeah, gonna be worth it. It's worth it. Um, yeah, I don't, I do not think you will be disappointed if you are, you know, still questioning whether you want to see Pig yeah. or not. Yeah. Um. Our next movie that we're playing, that we've been playing, uh, we just opened this last Friday, still going, is Nine Days. Nine days. Um, mm. This, so, uh, so, so Neon released Pig, and like Neon and A24, I, I think of as, as being some of like the leaders of new indie films. Yeah. Right. Sony Picture Classics, which which releases Nine Days, has been around for. 20 30 yeah, like they're, yeah, they're, 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 they've been around for a long time yeah but sometimes like this is sort of a movie that i would not expect from sony pictures class not, okay. not, really? not at all um yeah, yeah I, I think more of i think they're taking a risk here I, yeah I, I think it's them them realizing that like we want to be more in that neon a24 area right a little right. bit um and and doing things that are, that are a little more uh out there they usually only take a chance on Sundance movies if it like won all the awards mm-hmm. and was... and this one got one of the awards at Sundance. Yeah, it was best screenwriting. Yeah, 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 it yeah. was a screenwriting award. Yeah, um, yeah, but and and, and really, <clears throat> I remember when I was describing this to someone the other day, just trying to get like the the, the basic plot. I think I said something to the extent of it's about uh, souls who all convene at a cabin in the middle of the desert and are interviewed. Uh, to find out whether they can uh, be born into the real world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, of, of course, I should also say that all of these souls are represented by full-grown adults. And so, right, right. It's not uh, like soul. Yeah. Or Inside Out. It's, yeah, it, it's, yeah. It's not like you're going to see some weird, you know, CGI or something like that. Right. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's actors. Not, it's not yeah. the script from Lost. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. Where they're, yeah. Yeah. And, and also something I really like about this movie um, is that the interviewer who you know uh, is essentially judging all these people to find out whether they are worthy of being alive and being born to the world is depicted as a tired bureaucrat and right, so he's right. you know writing notes he's got file cabinets full of uh, exit you know extensive notes uh and it's it's like it's just this job that he just has to do mm-hmm. for eternity mm-hmm. uh, right. which is a concept I, I always really like of combining fantasy and, and mundane yeah right, like right, it's right, like right. it's like that whole um kind of heaven metaphor like someone's at the gate you know the pearly gates and they're like yeah judging you like Are right you good enough to come into heaven right right but they're judging yeah. you while holding Hol- a giant book yes like, and like like mm, with photocopies and yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think what what this movie does that t- it takes that concept and what really makes it special though is it very much humanizes that person sure. and and realizes that the way that that we as audiences find these stories fascinating is by recognizing that the person that has that job is also a person who is fallible and who has experiences and right. uh what like at, at least when when this kind of story is told say in, in a motion picture or or something that's the way that it works best. Right. Otherwise, it's just sort of like old religiosity that we don't really find. Yeah, kind of yeah, exactly. That's uh, that's what I found so interesting about the movie is that it kind of tricks you a little bit into thinking the movie is about the interview when really the movie's about Will. Yes, yeah, and, yeah. W- and it's Will, about, the, the character himself, who is the interviewer. Yeah, interviewer. yeah, and it's about him because he was he lived on Earth and was a living human soul, and now this is his job and. He feels like he kind of failed in his life on Earth. Yeah, um, I'm almost wondering if he committed suicide. And yeah, it never and, it never tells you, but it's, yeah, it's, it's a possibility. And that's kind of like if you did that, then you become the, oh, the interviewer kind of thing. Um, but the movie's about because the, the, the big the movie's basically a moral dilemma. Is he's got Alexander Sarsgaard and he's got ZZ Beats. And is it ZZ Beats or 
I don't know if it's Zazzy. Zazzy. I've, I've always said Zazzy. Zazzy. Okay. Um, and one of them looks at the world with like curiosity and optim- optimism, and the other one is pessimistic and, and kind of thinks like we got to protect ourselves, you know. Um, and kind of the whole conversation of the movie is like is is one well, of yeah. these the right way yeah, to the exist balance. in the yeah. world? Yeah. Which yeah. way to go? Yeah. Right. Right. The thing that I took away most on my second viewing was was how this mo- this movie's perspective is, is is very much one of like there is no objectivity and everything is filtered through our experiences and right. our perspective and and how and I think I think maybe one of the most profound things about this movie is how each of these like souls before they're born really really all of them are already full complete human beings. Right, right. And even though some of them don't make it, I think there is an implication in the movie that, like, it doesn't mean any of them are lesser human beings. It's just the fact that, like, right. this system, which is, like, e- even the, the the characters who are a part of the system, they they have no idea why they're doing what they're doing or, like, how it was created or anything like but that. But they know that they're doing yeah, it. But they know that yeah, they're doing yeah. it. Um, but there, and there's an implication that, like, if, that's, if that same group of souls can't... Cause the, the movie also says that like there are different houses elsewhere where like people, right, are, right. all these souls are being interviewed. So if this same group of souls went through another interviewer, a different soul would be chosen. Totally. And yeah, so it's not yeah, it's yeah. it's not that like you know one of these is the best person. It's that like each interviewer just decides for themselves what they think the best person to right. go in the world. It's yeah. a luck of the draw yeah. thing almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, the yeah. reason I was I was telling Jared that this um, I had a lot of Burning Man flashbacks um, <laughs> for this one, and not just because of the images and things like that, but like a right. lot of people go out there to find themselves, you know? Right. Like, right, in the desert. In the desert, you know? And they're just like, I have to go. And, you know, some people go out there for the wrong reasons. Right. Okay. I mean, and they don't understand what's happening. What is happening is that these installations are going out there they're being built. You enjoy them. They burn, and, and that's it. Gone. Yep. That is it. Okay, you get them for five days. It's a right? metaphor. It's a metaphor, right? So there's no interviewer, but you're really like, this is gonna sound really out there, but you're interviewing yourself. Sure. Yeah. 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 So yeah. That like, sounds like go, a great Burning Man description I've heard. So you know, you go out there and you're like, can I handle this? Because um, there's usually one death every year right. at Burning Man and you sign your life away and it, it, it could be it one year was a suicide. Right. Unfortunately. What someone dehyd gets dehydrated and dies. Someone right. overdoses. Right. You know, I mean they're just one death every year. And who knows? Some you know, but everyone has their own experience and it really is, I can tell you from from my experience, yeah. Well how life changing it was. And that was right. not not on drugs. Right, right, right. So this to me was just like, yeah, that finding yourself. I don't yeah. know. It's, it's 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 a very deep movie, but it's also a very straightforward. Movie. Yeah, Completely. absolutely. It's not it's not couched in metaphor no, really at no. all. Like it's yeah, yeah. All that, the dialogue is very straightforward. Yeah, like I was I was having a conversation with with Tim the other day, our our, our coworker Tim, and we were both saying how. Watching it the second time, there were there really wasn't a lot that we, like we didn't see the first time because again we said like it's a very deep movie but like it's pretty straightforward. You, yeah. You kind of you kind of get what the movie's about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like I, I really enjoyed it watching the second time, but I was like, yeah, yeah, I, this is still a lot, and but yeah, it's it, it's pretty clear. It's a lot. Yeah. Um, Julie, have you seen the movie Afterlife at all? No, I haven't seen Afterlife. Got it. No. Because the, the the main plot of that movie is it's about Again, like a, a bureaucratic office in the afterlife, where after pe- people die, they come here, and it, it, the the aesthetic of that movie is very similar yeah. to to Nine Days. And in, in the plot of that movie, people are interviewed to find out what their happiest memory in life was, mm-hmm. and then the people in this office op- in this office will, in a studio set, recreate that memory so that people can then live in that memory in perpetuity. Are they, are they dead? And oh, already, yeah, okay, right yeah. So that. that's that was that's because I knew about afterlife, so that's why I was bringing up the heaven metaphor. And right, like, right. You know, yeah. Uh, people have this, you know, very extreme religious people have this idea of heaven, right? And mm-hmm. that's their end goal is to get to heaven, get to heaven, get to heaven. Yeah. Nobody knows what heaven is like. Wait, okay? I mean, you, that's the entire human experience. Uh, right? Are you, are you saying that it's not, we're not all on clouds and there's like pearly gates and shit? Is that? And we're wearing white robes Wait, with t- gold harps. Listen, I mean, man, like, I, went, I, I went to Catholic school. I went to Catholic school, uh, yeah. and they taught me real well. 
So what I, heaven was like? Yeah, mm. I like I've seen photos of white Jesus, okay. and you know I believe all of it. Okay. I believe so all of living, it, and I will kill you if you try to tell me differently. You're living so every how, day to get to that place. Yeah, totally, and I will judge anyone who stops me. I mean, that yeah. is how religious wars start. Yeah. Well, yeah, yes, like that? but that's the thing. That's, mm, that's the, that is metaphor yeah, for yeah, this. That nirvana yeah. people are right. trying to find that because right. they're they're afraid. Totally. There's right. fear is driving a lot of this. And I right. think what, what's right. kind of cool. Like, What's really cool about the decision, both in this movie and again in Afterlife, is how these places that are, you know, not you know, either before life or afterlife are depicted as sort of like run-down institutions. And I think because that is sort of like the opposite of what the myth- mythologized version of afterlife is, that um, that that's very fascinating for audience, audience members to be like, okay, what if we think about yeah the afterlife or limbo as being this like kind of like run down yeah, like what, what like, if what if heaven looked like reno yeah <laughs> like or could be like what the shit the nevada desert really? yeah, where burning yeah. man is right 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 i gotta say though i uh, like talking about the the scene in pig with the chef with the chef and oh yeah uh, the scene in um another really important scene to me this year was was the kid dancing in the graveyard at the end of summer of 85. Oh, yeah. Um, to me, in uh, Nine Days, the woman uh, getting to live her favorite moment uh, riding the bicycle mm. absolutely took my breath away. Nice. Like, I thought that was absolutely breathtaking filmmaking. Like, I, that, like, gave me goosebumps. It almost made me stand out of my seat. It's like you don't like to cat. It just felt like this. Be- and the same thing with the beach scene too. Like oh, yeah. Those two moments in that film are two of the most sublime cinematic mm-hmm. moments I've mm-hmm. seen. Yeah, because yeah, a we'll, very long time. We'll we'll say that Nine Days does again have direct conversation with the movie Afterlife, and so you've yeah, seen that. You'll yeah. see how Nine Days does incorporate it, but it does it does something different, which which I think is is worth seeing the movie for. Well, yeah. technically um, too. I mean, this yeah, film. Beautiful. The photography and yeah, all yeah. the technical stuff. Again, Edson Oda, the director of this, also his directorial debut, must have done commercials or something. And like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have a really great. And I was I mean, reading. I don't know fine. anything more, but I was reading about Afterlife the other day, and I saw that one of the lead actors in Afterlife's last name is Oda. Oh, I mean, it's a and it's a common Japanese name. totally, but I, it made me go like I wonder if there's like any sort of yeah, any sort of connection because it is Possibly. a it is a similar movie. A lot, a lot of shorts. Oh, yes. yeah, he yeah. he's directed over ten shorts. Okay, there you go. so okay. a lot of yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he, he 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 must have gone through Sundance Institute mm-hmm. and and mm-hmm. also um, Winston Duke is a producer on Nine Days. Right. So is right. Spike Jones. So oh, there was wow. obviously a lot of a lot of. Uh, other people who are like, yeah, we want to help finance music this. Video, music video, Spike Jones right, music right. video. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, also, one thing I really, really quickly want to mention, and I said this a bit off mic, uh, Benedict Wong is also in the, this movie, mm-hmm. and I really like Benedict Wong. He's been acting for a long time since like, yeah. Moon and Sunshine, and he's obviously in the Doctor Strange movies. He usually always plays either Americans or Chinese. But he's British, mm-hmm. and it's really great in this movie to hear his natural Cockney London accent. Yes. And I really enjoy so it. Nice. Yeah, so yeah. nice. Yeah, it was. It, yeah, I, he's gonna be in uh, Shang Chi. Shang Chi. Shang Chi. Yes. Yeah. yeah as well. Again, he's a he's a Marvel. Character yeah, yeah. Now, so. I didn't I didn't know he was gonna be in it though. I thought I didn't think we were gonna see him again until the Doctor next Strange. Doctor Strange. Yeah. So I'm excited that he's gonna pop up again before that. That, that should be cool. Yeah. And um, I I love Tony Hale. Yes, Tony I Hale's love, great in um, Nine Days. I love Pennywise. Yeah, <laughs> Bill Scar's guard. One of the, one of the many Scar's guards. <laughs> yeah, I, I do want to say that in my opinion, I, I do think um, the father Stellan Scar's guard is still the hottest of all the Scar's. Pro- yeah, you're not. You know, uh, uh, no. Uh, no. I just I just love no. Stellan. I, I really like Stellan. I wonder if it'll. I wonder if his gross Harkonnen performance in Dune <laughs> will kill that for you. Yeah, can probably. We, can we? Can we? Get them to create a superhero team, that whole family, and they could be the Stars Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. Okay. No, Alexander's the hot, hands down hottest. He he is he is unobjectively hot. Yeah, yeah. Duh. Right. Yeah. Un- unobje- unobjectively. <laughs> I still can't believe he's the guy who lights himself on fire accidentally in Zoolander. Oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh he's, yeah. He's the guy that lights the cigarette. <laughs> yeah, he lights the cigarette. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> I, his best yeah, role, his yeah, best role. Easily. Um, he was full frontal in um, True, True Blood. Blood. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, more yeah, more than once. <laughs> yeah. More than once. 
but yeah, Bill's great in Nine Days. Yeah, um, yeah, he really is. Yeah, Very yeah. subtle. The the cast is really just fires on all cylinders. Yeah. I yeah. think I think it was great casting. Yeah. Wonderful casting. Yeah. For sure. That one's sticking with me. Like that and Pig are both just really. I think about them every day. Like since I've seen them, I thought about those movies. Every, no, I, I, I think know. I think they're they are those kind of movies. Like yeah, there's, yeah. Hey, and if, if that's what you come to Tin Pan to see movies that stick with you, like, again, yeah. this is like our best well, lineup that we've I'm had kinda, in a long time. I know. I'm kind of glad I'm not working right now. Because you'd just be watching them over and over again? Or? I definitely, yesterday I thought, like, oh, I'm for sure going to do you know, other work I had to do for nine days. I was like, oh, I'm just going to sit down. Yeah, I'm just going to watch yeah. I have watched Pig, like, four times. I'm, and I'm just like, okay, you get him, Nicholas. Like, yeah, 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 you see, get him. You, you get him, Nicholas. Again, and I'd be like, "Oh my I w- God!" I wonder if he'll get the pig this time. Yeah. Nope. nope. Uh, I, love, I honestly, now I really love Nicholas. Yeah, Cage. totally. Right. Yes, we turn, we turn <laughs> Julia around. We got her. God, yeah, he's uh, so good. Can't wait to meet his brother. Yeah. Oh yeah, he'll be here for Ben Film. Oh yeah, he's, yeah, he's coming for the Ben Film Festival. Yeah. 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 Uh, right. yeah. Please come and see Nine Days if you haven't already. Um, I mean, I think maybe more than anything, this is a tin pan. Oh yeah, 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 yeah for real. Man. Yeah, uh, I, I think it will satisfy both our younger audience and our older older audience. Uh, yeah, if, if you like you like indie movies, this is this is the one to come out for for sure. Yeah. It's like when you hear, oh, this one went to Sundance. Like this is the kind of movie that like you're like, oh, this is like Sundance. Yes, mm-hmm. TM. Yes, TM. Yeah, yeah. Copyright. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Lastly, uh, we want to talk about the Green Knight. Uh, this is definitely the genre side of the Tin Pan movies. Uh, maybe the most genre. I can't remember the last time we've had this much of like a fantasy genre. Yeah. Kind yeah. Of movie. Yeah. Um, again, A24 has been uh, hyping this movie since last year before the pandemic pandemic even happened. Um, at that time, I didn't even I wasn't even sure if like we would play it because I knew that A24 was planning it to be their widest release ever. And so I thought it, I thought they might reserve it for big multiplexes. Totally, totally. Um, but I do think in the post-vaccination future that we are now in, things are different. And yeah, it, yeah. When we reached out to A24, they were happy to to have us uh, us play it again. And yeah, I yeah. I think that they were just like last year. They were like, no, no, no. We're not gonna let anyone have it virtual. We're not gonna stream it. We're just gonna wait. Yes, it, it's it's be, it's because they had yeah. invested so much into it okay. being a big theatrical release. That's they were like, no, we're just gonna. We're Hold it off, Hold and it's, it off. it's we're gonna because they they were I think A twenty four was looking at the Green Knight as being their big blockbuster, okay. and so then in the same way that you know all, all the big blockbusters blockbusters like Dune and like uh, I don't know what what else was like the big movies that uh, that, that got that we lost put, well, last like, year like Black Widow yeah Black yeah. Widow yeah. Or, yeah. Or, yeah. Or, yeah. Jungle, Jungle Cruise, Cruise. It's, yeah. it's it's that. Because A twenty four has never had a movie this big before, right, so because right. they had so much invested there, uh, yeah. They, now, and, when we say big, mm-hmm. do we mean money spent? I, I think so. Dollars spent on the production. I, I, I keep think so. I keep hearing different uh, quotes for the budget on it. Like like when when before it came out, like last year, they were saying it was their first hundred billion dollar movie, and then I heard it was like seventy million, and then I heard it was like forty million. Yeah, so, strangely on 15. on Green Knight, yeah, it, on, on Wikipedia it lists it lists it at fifteen, 15 million. Yeah, yeah. See um, when we yeah, which, but but again, that budget always officially budget always just refers to the film's budget, but marketing could be make that double at, at the very least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. And box office, sadly, box office is not is three million short. It's 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 getting there. I, I think it might still uh, well, ha- have a long. Was it last Friday? They open last Friday or the Friday before? It's been it's been in 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 lots of cinemas since July thirtieth. July thirtieth, that's the really. Um, okay. So it, it's been it's been planned for for, for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, again, I think also uh, David Lowry has had a collaboration with A twenty four for a while. He released right. Uh, right. a ghost story. Um, I think was it was Ain't Them Body Saints also an A twenty four? That was IFC. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So maybe IFC. maybe Ghost Story was his only A twenty four. It might be uh, old because I think Old Man and the Gun is also IFC, if I remember right. Probably, yeah, probably. Um, um, and then, of course, Pete's Dragon was Disney. Was Disney. And then uh, Peter Pan is going to be Disney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, David Lowry is maybe one of the best definitions of the director who does one for me, one for them. Yeah, you know, yeah. It goes really, back and forth between really. indie and, and, and big studio. Um, 
Okay, so th- there's a lot to say about Green Knight um, based off of the Arthurian uh, legend, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. Um, I know I have friends who are big into medieval literature who were right. very excited when this right. got announced. Um, it's definitely a fantastical version of that. I think it leads into the fact that Arthurian stories are fantasy uh, and, and that they are, they're, they're based off of epic poems you know, from right. the 16th century. And so they're, right. they're already heightened versions of you know the uh, oral tradition yeah so i think yeah. this movie leans into that and like it makes it a straight fantasy oh film, it, yeah and awesome. it's it's episodic and proud yeah like, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, it, yeah it 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 may be honestly it may be adapts the spirit of a epic poem of, of an arthurian legend maybe the best i've ever seen yeah like, it's, yeah it's really. not I think sometimes a lot of times we think of like King Arthur stories told in cinema. It's a, it's almost very, uh, like, I don't know, just white English actors and beards being right, very stiff right, right, and right. like stoic. But this movie has just like movement and, and it's, it's, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. got a lot of energy to it, but um, it never, but it never slows down for like a pointless action sequence. Totally. Ever. Not, not once. Like it's it, like, if there's any sort of action, it's always based in story or character yeah you know? yeah um a lot, a, lot of, a lot of a lot of brooding a lot of mood a lot of tone yeah um th- uh a lot of ejaculate you do you do you do see some sexiness there's, on screen there's, it's pretty sexy, sexy. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's a much sexy. yeah it's a yes. much sexier movie than i expected totally yeah. okay but yeah well, i think the thing that's most exciting is the fact that dev patel is in the main role Dev right, Patel right. plays a medieval hero on a mysterious quest in David Lowry's adaptation of the 14th century Arthurian romance, Monty S- Python and the Seven Seals. Yeah. <laughs> Sweeping. Is he a Monty yeah. Python and the Seventh Seven Seal? Seal? That's good. Well, I'm looking, oh, at, the, shit. I'm looking at the New York Times But right I'm now. saying <laughs> that is like, yeah, 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 they yeah. nailed that. Oh, duh. Yeah. They nailed that. Yeah, yeah that's the, yeah. You <laughs> that combine those two movies and you've, got, and you've got the green light. Um, yeah. yeah, I think... Dev Patel is probably one of the most exciting actors working today. Yeah. Um, yeah. This combined with him uh, as David Copperfield last year, um, he's he's yeah, not not only a beautiful human being, but yeah, someone who is very interested in just doing weird things all over the place. I yeah. think he's doing a great job of as, as much as he was you know great in Slumdog Millionaire, his breakthrough. He's definitely right. a kid back then, and right. like he's doing a good job of sort of shedding that image of just being a, a naive young kid. Yeah. His performance, um, I still think it's incredibly underrated. But Hotel Mumbai, I thought was absolutely it pinned me to my seat yeah. For I, two I, I know that yeah, you really like that movie. I, I, just, I need to see it. It's rough. Um, it's rough, but he is beautiful. I think he. Her. I think he really chooses wisely. Yeah, he yeah. Does. He's like, very he's, careful. Yeah. He's very, very careful. careful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think honestly, after after watching Green Knight, he's. I've always loved. Uh, I was going to say Riz Ahmed. No, Dev Patel. Um, I love Dev Patel. I think he's now one of my favorite actors. Yeah, okay. he's after so good. Okay. Green Knight. Okay. Um, yeah, I think. Uh, you know, if if Riz Ahmed doesn't get James Bond next, I want Dev Patel to be James Bond. Yeah, he would make now. a. Re- I think Green Knight will give dev patel roles that he like shit that he hasn't ever come close to more to. action yeah. type yeah films. oh he's yeah. his bigger role yeah. his yeah, next yeah, thing yeah. actually dev patel is going to make his directorial debut oh, already uh and uh, it's it's described as uh john wick in mumbai okay and so it's going to be and, and dev patel is going to star in it too I'll so it, he's it. basically going to be nice. okay. he's going to be an assassin uh, in mumbai all right all right i mean i normally would be like really why can you need some more experience under your belt, but see, you I mean, know. I, 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 I could see Dev Patel being a great actor director. I, I'm, like, I mean, but there. but he's also uh, Slumdog Millionaire is 15 years old. Like he's been That's making true. movies totally. for yeah. 15 and, years, especially when you're like your first. Because I think Skins was his only really thing before Slumdog Millionaire. So really, okay. his, his yeah. first movie was directed by Danny Boyle. So like he got right, 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 right. Yeah, that's he got true. one of the great directors. Well, so. yeah. Okay, yeah. so that just proves right there that a lot of actors go out there doing like I'm gonna do my time, right? But right, I really want right, to be a director, right? Well, that's that's I've noticed like Jason, I really want to be a director. Jason Bateman, right? He's directing everything. Like he he directs like 20 or 30 episodes of television a year. Like yeah. it's okay. insane. Yeah, he's got his, his output. Are you talking about Ozark? 
Yeah, like he, well, he directs a lot of Ozark, but he directed a lot of Outsider and um, Arrested Development, and he directed several, yeah, Arrested Development. He, and he's very TV. He's a very yeah more TV. But more he's uh, like I saw an interview with him recently, and he's like, you you hit a point where you're like, oh, I don't want to be told mm. how to frame this. I want to frame this myself. I see how it should be done, and so you stop being able to like not take direction, but yeah. you start being like, I have I. I'm starting to have too many visions for how things should be done. Now but I want to direct. Everything. I think it's yeah. more of the actor director part that bugs me. A little right. Because right, I'm just right. like, are you saving money or are you that <laughs> right. egotistical? <laughs> right. But right. Like, nope. Nope. I have to do both. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, I don't know. That's like, why, like, I think it's funny when you see actors that are better directors. Like, like I Ben Affleck jumps to mind immediately. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. He's, he's a better director than he's an actor. Way you know? better. Yeah. And it's like, oh, so like, you, just take like, yourself out. Right, like live, live by night. He directed the hell out of Live by Night, and he sucked in it as the lead yeah. actor. Right, so it was kind, of, you know, the double duty part. Yeah, is, yeah. That's what I'm saying. The double duty part, I think, shouldn't yeah. be allowed. Right, right. Because it's you right. are there's so much energy you're putting into that director brain. Right. Then you have to suddenly switch over to. Right. And I don't think you get a good performance. Right. If you're I mean, directing I, yourself. I'm sorry. I, that's just me. I think there's I some who, who can do it. I, I, I wouldn't want to throw the, the baby out with the bathwater. Um, but but I, I, I do think that you are right to some extent. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That sometimes I think a lot of them. Work out. A lot of them fail at it. I think. Yeah. Uh, but I, Orson I, Welles, however, is oh, the Jesus. fucking man. Because he. Yeah, that's um, true. Yeah. That is true. And uh, Edward Norton, surprisingly, the two movies that he directed, he also acted in, and he was great in both of them, even though no one saw it. Yeah. Know, <laughs> but I, I'll say, I love Dev so much that like I'm, 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 I'm willing. I want him to take the chance. So I want that, him to be successful, yes, but I would yeah, like him yeah. after that experience. I would like for him to choose a path. Right, and to keep getting work. And sometimes and they that, do. Yeah, like yeah. you know, Edward Norton be, maybe is like. Eh, okay, I directed. I'm I'm going back. I did it. Well, yeah. also, well, and I guess <laughs> that hard. that movie, yeah, that movie flopped so bad. And that, how like, bad I, is that to the ego? Like right, really, right. you know? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Say, do you want to say Green Knight does have a great cast beyond Dev as oh, well? Yeah. Alicia Vikander's in this. Joel Edgerton. Sean um, Harris. Sean Harris as King Arthur. Sean Harris kind of uh, stole the movie for me. Yeah, I I, I, lo- I also love Kate Dickey. Yeah, I think Kate she's Dickey's one of the great, great. Scottish actresses. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the incredible gravelly voice of Ralph Innocent oh. is the Green Knight. God, he's so like no one else. No one else could have played the Green Knight. What no great casting! Yeah. Make one of your knights strike me down. <laughs> oh, no, Batman. <laughs> I expect you to die. One year hence. <laughs> yeah, one year hence. Oh, Dude, but great. I like Sean Harris, who to me has always played these really icky bad guys. Like mm-hmm. he's very good at playing villains. Yeah. His his villainous role in the uh, Red Riding trilogy, the BBC Red Riding trilogy. Oh, he yeah. was I heard about that. The biggest scumbag in those movies ever. And so seeing him play King Arthur, it was like, wow. Yeah. You have range. I had no yeah. idea. Totally. You gave gravitas to King Arthur that I've never seen before. You made him a human. Yeah. I don't know. It was I was blown away. Yeah. It what was, part did Jared Leto play? Uh, uh, under, uh, Joel Edgerton. Yeah, he played Joel Edgerton in the film. <laughs> um, yes. I yeah. It, it was. It, he's I got great. It in. He was great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, 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 also, another thing I read about concerning this movie is that apparently. Um, in COVID, David Lowry re-edited this whole movie. Totally. So apparently there's a different cut of this movie that would have originally come out had COVID not happened. Okay. Right. And it's like um, 15 minutes shorter. Yeah. Supposedly yeah, yeah. this one, like, it's a lot more, like, languid and, like, the slower pace that we're getting this one. Like, right. It sounds like the first cut was more, like, yeah. there, there was more of, like, a, like, a, like action to it. Maybe. Right, right. And this is a more slower paced movie. Right. And I'm curious about that, too, because uh, you saw it at Regal as well, yeah. right? So when I saw it at Regal, there was... It was a good sized house. It was pretty packed, and um, the audience, aside from me and my friend that I saw it with, hated it. Uh, they were like, "Boo!" Like not boo, but like they were like, "What?" Like, what like did, they did, think? did you hear a couple of like audible groans or like oh, laughter? Like, like oh really? Like kind of like that's it? Mm. Um, because I think people did go they, into they, it. They expected Game of Thrones or or something more fantasy. But it's super. There's a talking. It's very fan- There's a fucking talking fox in it. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. What else yeah, do you yeah, want? Yeah, yeah. Um, but there's no, no like, dragons. There's no dragons. Yeah. 
Um, but no, I, I think they expected something faster paced and expecting so, like there's I I was thinking about I don't think there is a sword fight in the whole movie. Uh, I mean there technically is, but not 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 what you're thinking. In, yeah, in the, in the yeah, traditional yeah. Sword. So I think people were going into it expecting something more of an action I can, fantasy. I, yeah. I can see that. Um, so I'm curious, like I, I'm really curious when we get it here at the theater, like how audiences are going to react to it. I'm again. I think our audience is usually more open to yeah, language yeah. sort of movies, so yeah. I think uh, yeah, we'll probably we'll probably yeah, get yeah. get some really really Especially good. Especially if someone's meowing outside, yeah, like exactly. I think that'll give think that'll yeah some extra. Effect. As someone who's been yelled at by our audience members for the movie Under the Skin, I no longer have faith in any audiences. I have faith in them, but I'm just saying. Yeah. The Tin Pan audience might fucking hate some, this. Some too. sometimes they do uh, blame the messenger, and we're just the messenger. We're just yeah. It's like I'm yeah yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, though, though I guess we do ride for these movies a lot, and we are riding for this movie right now. Yeah, so. yeah, that's true. That's true. We do, and especially with me as being the film critic, like I get some quite angry emails sometimes. But hey, you know, movies. we're the ones that are you know saying that you know you got to see the weird out there stuff, and uh, you know don't just stay in your box and uh, ex- you know expand your horizons. We're yeah, not always yeah, right. Yeah. Um, this is very true. We're not always right. Our choices aren't going to be a hundred percent. And even when we end movies, yes, like Werewolves Within. <laughs> but man, we, we had such a good turnout for it. It was we great. Have yeah. kept them. It's, 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 it's because I, w- I wanted Green Knight to have two screenings this Friday night. Yeah. It's going to get two screenings I because know. of that. It really is. I know. No, really we're, is. We're, we're doing it. We're doing it. We learn from our mistakes. That's, well, that's, <laughs> no, that is also the interesting thing, too, is back, like back when I worked here years and years and years ago, we would always get the screeners to every single movie yeah. that we showed. So we could watch everything before we booked it and showed it yeah. to just to, to decide yes yeah. this is a good movie we don't really we're not in that same position anymore so yeah. a lot of times we really are it is rolling the dice taking a chance sure. on on the movie being good sure you know? now is that because they're just not doing that anymore certain, yeah certain i mean we can get some of them but also i think co- coming into it like i actually just got a screener today for this new film coming up from Sony about uh, Van Gogh, about a lost Van Gogh painting. Oh, yeah. Um, and so it's like, I'll be able to watch that. But they're just not available for all movies. Like, I couldn't get a screener for Green Knight. I couldn't get a screener for Pig, you know. It's certain well, they ones. they definitely won't link them to you. I know that. Yeah, yeah, that yeah is for a big, sure. That's a big, big no. no, no. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know what it is. Uh, all right. The, well, yeah. I'm excited. I'm ready to see those numbers after the weekend. Yeah, I'm excited be, to listen um, to hear what what your weekend's like totally. and yeah. I can't wait to see it because um, I haven't seen it yet but I will and yeah. I already know when it's uh, available for streaming too because I looked that up last night it's going to oh, be nice. a couple months yeah, it's yeah, still, the, so yeah. F- again A24 is really yeah. 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 I, I, yeah. I did see that their A24 is doing a one night only screening yeah, I, I, of it I, I yeah, did read that yeah. yeah, but it's 20 bucks it's so it's on still yeah. no Which on A twenty four. It's they have their own screening. Service. Yeah, because that, that was how they did it for Minari. Was, oh, was the, the okay, okay. Yeah, okay. 20, yeah it's I'll twenty bucks. Yeah. So. Minari was like a because because that was for it. They wanted to make sure that it was Oscar contention. So like A twenty four did a limited run virtual screening oh, okay. of Minari. It was like okay. three days or something. Yeah, it was really days. short. Yeah, yeah, stuff okay. like that. Uh, All right. Anyway, yeah, Green Knight. It's great. I think yeah, if, if you like weird out there movies this this is it just fits the bill yeah it, it really, really fits does. the bill it um, is it watch the trailer yeah watch, watch that the trailer. trailer and come into it with an open mind everybody because you don't want an audience like regal who is well like, i feel like ah. if you it's if you if you understand the basic tone and vibe of an a24 yeah. movie yeah and then we, we had a lot don't. of people who who came for zola who came because it was an a24 movie. right exactly. and so yeah, i think exactly. there's gonna be and people others like who did not the opposite of that was like what did i just watch yeah we yeah we you had know? some people like we had people be like pissed what? off at the trailer yeah for yeah. yeah they were yeah. like huh and then yeah. it's like no come on, come on. Yeah. you know you're at you're mind. at you're at an indie theater yeah, yeah what do you mind, yeah. but there were some people who walked out of here what did I just say? Yeah, yeah. Why was why was what? that a movie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uncomfortable. That's what it's supposed to be. Yeah, it really is very uncomfortable. So yeah, we got Green Knight open up this Friday. We yeah. still are showing nine days as well as Pig. Um we're gonna have more movies in, in, in the coming weeks. Yeah, yeah. Um there's some good stuff out there that I think has potential. I don't know if we know for sure exactly what we're gonna be getting, but we're gonna figure out the next yeah, we'll or so. We'll yeah. Uh Hey, we also have this Janice series that we're doing. Uh, oh. We're gonna we're, we still have 
We're going to play Solaris coming up. Um, yep. And Jared and I are going to confirm a lot of really cool titles. Yeah. Uh, and so within the next week, we'll have everything planned for the rest of for the, the rest year. For the rest of the year. For, for the Jazz yeah. series. Um, really excited about that. Um, so I hope you guys are really, really into ch- New Wave Czech. Because we're going to do... We'll see. We'll see. So uh, much New Wave Czech. Is Nicolas Cage in them? He's in all of them. Is he? Oh, yeah. Well, sign uh, me up. It's, it's Jared Leto and, and Nicolas Cage. Cage. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone. Uh, thanks for listening. We we really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, please come out to Tin Pan and see these please, movies. Please, please come um, out to Tin Pan. Find some parking. You know, you got this. Come support local. It's a dollar per hour in the parking garage. It's not too bad. Yep. If you come at nighttime, it actually is free. Yes, yes. yeah. After <laughs> after six, after six, after six, six it's free. Yeah, and, so, and we have yeah. we're, we're playing movies yep, late now. Late so. now, yeah. so come on yeah. down yeah. and um, get some of this delicious popcorn. Yes. Yeah, it's so candy, good. fresh popcorn. And come see us. I hand melt the butter. Oh, we do. Yeah, you. we churn it. Yeah, <laughs> everything. Yeah, super churned. I just hold it for three hours, and yeah. then it drips onto the popcorn. That sounds right. Yeah. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. We really appreciate it. Uh, again, this is Tin Pan Podcast, recorded at a Tin Pan Theater in Bend, Oregon, from Bend Film and Tin Pan Theater. My name is Todd Leiser. I'm Jared Rasek. I'm Julie Vernis, also known as Chicken nice. Play. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye.